and welcome to UPL Limited second quarter and sequence ended 30th September 2021 earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded and now hand the conference over to Ms. Radhika Arora. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you. Good morning and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining us today for the results for the quarter and half year ended 30th September 2021. On this call, we will be referring to a presentation that has been shared with you and is also available on our website. And we take as having read the safe harbor statement. From the management, we have with us Global CEO, Mr. Jay Shroff, Global CFO, Rajinder Darak, COO, Carlos Velasa, Glo Global CFO, Anand Vora, Raj Tiwari, Global Chief Supply Chain Officer, and Farooq Hilu, Chief Commercial Officer. We will start with a brief overview from Jay, followed by a business update from Carlos, and then a financial update from Anand. With that, let me hand it over to Jay. Thank you, Radhika. Pleasure to talk to everyone today. Uh, it's been a challenging year, as uh, one can imagine. Uh, lots of uh, volatility in almost every every sector we can imagine, every aspect of our business, particularly running a business with a global presence. Uh, there has been a lot of sleepless nights for our whole team, but they've done an except exceptionally good job, as you will see. Uh, on the ESG front, I'd just like to cover some highlights. Reimagining sustainability is a key focus of uh, UPL. Over the last five years, we have reduced water consumption uh, by 21%, carbon emissions by 26%, waste by 45%. In the first half of this year, we have reduced carbon emissions by 4%, water by 18%, and waste by 29%. And we are uh, keep investing in technologies and ability to reduce uh, waste and reduce our improve our ESG across the board. We've also signed the climate pledge, which is uh, 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 a commitment to reduce a carbon footprint and uh, by 2040 to zero. We've also launched the Gigaton Challenge, which is to reduce CO2 in the atmosphere by one gigatons by 2040. This is using agriculture as a key tool to reduce, to decarbonize the world. We will mobilize 100 million hectares of acres with through farmers to decarbonize the world. It's one of the most exciting challenges in our sector in the world for decarbonization. At Nurture Farm is one of the key initiatives of digitizing the ecosystem for agriculture inputs. Nurture has had tremendous success in the last 18 months. We have onboarded 1.4 million farmers. We've onboarded 60,000 retailers. We have had a GMV of 600 crores in the last six months. We have serviced almost 3 million acres and we have 90% adoption on a digital platform. We have also helped farmers trade 5,000 tons of their produce. We also launched the End of the Burn campaign, which actually helps farmers not to burn their crop. One of the key challenges in the North India is in this part time of the year, farmers burn about 6 million hectares of rice stubble. UPL and, and Nurture, our platform was able to reduce, take a target of 10%, and we are very happy to share that as of last night, we did about 400,000 acres were completed. We will do a little bit more, but we are committed to end this in the next three years. We have a lot of requests from the government and other agencies to do that next year, completely end the burning of uh, the rice stubble. NPP is another initiative which we have formed all our biological business uh, comes through NPP, and we have launched a lot of products, and NPP platform is also doing amazingly well. We have uh, 
focused on developing bio solutions for all the key challenges being faced by farmers, and that business also is growing. We have signed a long-term agreement with Christian Hansen, one of the key dev- uh, companies in Europe on bio solutions. They will manufacture uh, products as per our request for some of the challenges we see and, and research targets we give them. We also backed the Asian Sustainability Award a couple of months ago. So with that, I'll hand over to, to Carlos. Carlos to give you a business update. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I am pleased to join you today and present our financial results. Carlos? Yes. Uh, so sorry to interrupt. If you can speak closer to the uh, device, please. You're sounding very distant. Uh, okay. I will start again. Uh, thanks, Jay. Good evening, everyone. I am pleased to join you today and present our financial results for the second quarter of full year 2022. We are operating in a high volatile and uncertain world with every with ever emerging disruption. Whatever this challenge comes from supply chain or from manufacturing costs, we have continued to provide solutions to address the pain points of the farmers globally. Why be delivering our financial commitments? These have been made possible through our strong backward integration, manufacturing capabilities, and our supply chain excellence. The strengths of our team and our open egg network, whether through our customers or partners, has helped us anticipate the current challenge and has made us better prepared to effectively overcome them. Driven by our purpose, we are inspired to be agile, focus deeply on our customers and grow sustainably, and just as just exemplified by Jay. We are also excited to announce that uh, two new products, among other pending applications, have been granted in Brazil on the novel three-way mixture to support our soybean disease resistance man- management platform. These patents have been granted in nine additional countries, including USA, Argentina, Australia, Russia, and European countries. Now, moving to the financial results, I am glad to report that our revenue, as well as our EBITDA for the quarter, have been so robust growth. The revenue has grown by 18%, while the EBITDA has increased by 13% versus Q2 for year 2021. The increasing revenue was led by strong volume growth, enabled by our strong backward, backward integration capability, along with the improved overall price realization. Even though there has been a significant cost pressure on our key AIs in this inflationary environment, we have been successful in maintaining our gross profits to Q2 full year 2021 levels. Further, when adjusting our EBITDA for the nurture farm related investments, our EBITDA margin improved to around 20.1%, flat versus previous years, implying a 16% growth over Q2 of full year 2021. Now, let's look at the performance of our regions. In a turn, we resist around 21% growth, led by a strong increase in volume. Brazil, the key country in the region, grew by around 27% versus last year, driven by volume growth of our key products and supported by improved price realization. Other sub-regions such as South Pole and Argentina 
also demonstrated robust volume-based growth. Furthermore, Mexico has managed to maintain its revenue versus previous year, despite prevalent several drought conditions. Looking to North America now, revenue growth was achieved through higher price realization, especially due to its upside on non-selective herbicide. This was driven by improved price realization, resulting in robust growth of 24% over Q2 for year 2021, improved commodity price, tight supply for key products, and favorable channel stocks further enable the strong performance. Ladies and request all the participants to please stay connected while we reconnect the management. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for the management is reconnected. Thank you, and over to you, sir. Yes, sorry, I just uh, I repeat North America, as uh, I don't know until when and where you have been able to, to have uh, the information. In North America, heavily growth was achieved through higher price calibration, especially due to the upside in known selective herbicides. This was driven by improved price realization, resulting in a robust growth of 24% over Q2 year 2021. Improved commodity price, tight supply for key products, and favorable channel stocks further enabled the strong performance. In Europe, we grew by a robust 31% in Q2 versus previous year. This strong performance has been achieved through a mix of favorable volume growth and higher price realization. Improved market conditions, including weather, led to accelerated sales in future. France, that region, and the United Kingdom have delivered strong growth, leading by robust performance in full size, third size, and biosolution segments. Moving to India, India we added a better performance than the overall market in this part. Despite general slowdown due to 90, average 9% deficient rainfall and reduced current acreage for key crops such as cotton, soybean, and ground. Um, looking to the rest of the world, delivered around, we deliver around 13% growth in heaven this quarter best less of last year, despite the ongoing major supply constraints. Outside of New Zealand resisted strong growth led by the higher volume and improved price realization. Japan sales were comparable comparable with the previous year, despite depreciation of the Japan yen. Among the regions after the Middle East, region resisted deep growth primarily due to the unfavorable rains in part of Africa and overall supply chain shocks. But before hand over the call to our global CFO Anand to provide more details about our Q2 financial results, I'd like to congratulate our team for their resilience, dedication, and unified focus to deliver this strong performance in Q2, despite challenging on several fronts. Up to you now, uh, Anand, please. Thank you. Thank you, Carla. Thank you very much. Uh, good evening, everybody. Uh, I'm taking as read the presentation, which is put up on our website, and uh, having read the safe harbor statement. 
I'll begin with providing you the key highlights for the second quarter and first half earnings and then take you through the detailed financials. The performance of second quarter is a true reflection of company's resilience and strong business model that helps us deliver strong results amid the good overall supply and disruption and a tough environment. This was enabled by the backward integration and end-to-end -end manufacturing capability for our key products and of course the agility of our team. The Q2 performance highlights and Q2 PNL highlights are as follows. Talking about the key financial metrics for Q2, we ended the quarter with revenue of 10,567 crores, an increase of 18%. What is most heartening to, uh, to mention here is a 15% growth in volume over that of the same quarter in the previous year, and 3% due to price increases. Its primary target coming in, in September 2021. Talks about, talking about gross margin for Q2, the impact of 85 basis point increase in freight and 96 basis points on account of geographical revenue mix. The higher sale, uh, this revenue mix was largely on account of higher sales in Brazil, given the strong demand and the increasing acreage. However, I would also like to add here that the gross margin improved in Brazil and they were still lower than, although they were still lower than the company's average, thereby impacting our overall gross margins. So, in spite of the above two factors impacting the gross margin by almost 180 basis points, the gross margins for the quarter were at 39.7 percent, same as that of the previous year. In reality, therefore, our gross contribution in increased if we were to keep, uh, take aside the increase in freight, which is exceptional for this quarter, as at the same time the revenue mix. On the fixed overhead side, as the world is moving towards normalcy post the COVID global pandemic, we are seeing increase in travel, marketing, and advertising spend reaching close to the pre COVID level. In addition, we also continue to make long term investments in the digital platform. And for Q2, this was rupees 81 crores. As for EBITDA, keeping aside the investment in digital platforms, which are long-term in nature, we delivered EBITDA growth of 16% over that of the previous year, and EBITDA margins were at 20.1% for the quarter. The reported EBITDA stands at 2,045 crores, a growth of 13% over last year, and the EBITDA margin at 19.4%. The finance cost for the quarter is at 359 crores against 343 crores in Q2 last year. Of this, the interest cost on borrowing has reduced by 67 crores over that of the Q2 of the previous year. As mentioned in the last quarter, where we had NPM mark to market impact on hedges on advance orders, particularly in Brazil, these have been winding down with the execution of orders. In addition, the BRL depreciated during the quarter by 8%. It moved from 5 as the 30th of September, 5 to a dollar, 5 BRL to a dollar, to 5.4 BRL to a dollar as of 30th September. On the tax line, the tax rate for Q2 was at 23%, higher than Q2 last year, primarily because of the increase in profits in Brazil as a result of reversal of market market losses from Q1 on advance order as we start invoicing of the products with the beginning of the sowing season. Overall, full year tax rate is expected to be lower, will be expected to be at the lower end of the guidance of 15 to 18 percent. Net profit for the quarter stood stood at 633 crores versus 464 crores, which was lower than the market expectation, mainly due to increase in taxes, as explained earlier. H1 performance highlights. On H1, there was again a strong increase in revenue, with the overall revenue growing by 14%. Gross margins were marginally higher at 41.5 compared to that of H1 of the previous year. 
This, of course, was after considering the two impacts, as I mentioned, touched upon them earlier, which is the impact of trade costs as well as the regional mix. Without considering the above two impacts, the gross margin would have been at 43.4 percent, around 200 basis points higher than that of H1. A fixed cost on investments in digital platforms for H1 were at 124 crores. A bit of without considering the 124 crore investment in digital platform is 14 percent versus H1 last year, and H1 EBITDA margin stood at 21.1 percent almost at the same level as that of the previous year. Finance costs which increased by 72 crores is mainly attributed to the exchange impact and the NPV adjustment for long-term payables in line with the IFRS accounting standards. The interest of borrowing has gone down by 56 crores during H1. The effective tax for H1 is at 6.5% and will remain within the guidance phase guidance range as mentioned earlier. Moving on to working capital, the net working capital days stood at 114 days, higher by 8 days compared to last year. The payable as of September 2021 increased by 14 days, while inventories increased by 12 days and receivables increased by 10 days. We expect the net working capital days to be around 80 to 90 days by end of the financial year. Cash flow and debt position. As mentioned earlier, our debt obligation is being serviced efficiently, demonstrating a commitment towards our bankers and stakeholders at large, and we remain committed to reduce our debt and maintain investment grade credit rating. The gross debt and the net debt as on 30th September 2021 stood at 27,146 crores and the net debt at 24,279 crores. The net debt increased by 430 crores over that of the previous year's same period. However, it increased by 5,300 crores over March 21. We maintain our guidance to provide at the end of at the end provided at the end of the year to bring down the net debt to below two times that of the net debt to the tax. Overall, we believe that we are well placed and will continue to deliver strong results. With this, I will hand over back to the moderator. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one attached on telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Rahul Veera from Abacus. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, so just wanted some feelers about the current uh, ongoing season in the Latin America. It's ongoing season in Latin America. Huh? The season, they, they, uh, if we get uh, Brazil, the planting season is start and uh, it's moving very well. The weather is very good. Uh, farmers are very motivated. Uh, the same uh, for uh, South Pole and Argentina. Uh, uh, Mexico have had a very tremendous drought uh, in the Q1, uh, but the Q2 has recovered, uh, and we are believing that uh, Mexico will be able to uh, re uh, recover the numbers uh, as per budget until the end of uh, March 2022. Say, uh, in general, the, the, the Q1, Q2 for Latin America, except Brazil, have been more difficult, except as in China, South Korea, Brazil, uh, uh, because of these droughts in the in the Mexico and, and Central America. But uh, we are very confident uh, that uh, uh, our our deliverables in in Latin America. Sure. And so, uh, in terms of the uh, given the current glyphosate prices, how is the demand shaping up besides that? I'd say uh, uh, this is a quite uh, this is a quite good opportunity for us you now because glyphosate uh, is the main herbicide in the world is the biggest use in volume in the hectares uh, and the price of glyphosate moving up and its scarcity not availability uh, it's demanding and shifting demand to products like uh, our select 
or some other products that we have, our, uh, some of, the, of our solutions, like uh, 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 like select, like a group of names, uh, like uh, some of our pre, even our pre-emergence, our uh, S-metal core that we have just launched. Say uh, uh, the herbicide perspective, it's it's very very good and uh, open up a lot of opportunity for us. And uh, some of uh, our our AI, we are sold out because of uh, the demand is very high. Sure, sure. This is helpful, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Probal Sain from Centrum Broking. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity. Uh, with respect to the guidance that you again reiterated for the full year, H1 performance very clearly is running ahead of that uh, as of now. So should we interpret the guidance as just being conservative as of now or is there some wrinkles that you see on the horizon because of which the revenue growth guidance is you know still maintained at around sub 10 percent where we are running at 14 15 percent as of now for the first half that was my first question yeah thanks Prabhu. i mean uh, as you know we generally give guidance at the beginning of the year uh sure. things keep changing uh while it was clearly we do expect the revenues to be higher than what we have guided, which is 8 to 10 percent, there's no doubt. And mm -hmm. we do expect also to have good improvement in EBITDA. But uh, I'm sure you're well aware of the uncertainties which we are there seeing in the world in terms of supply chain and other things. Although we must, I must say that we are very, very well covered because of our manufacturing assets that we have. And uh, most of the key products we manufacture ourselves, so we are very well covered. So, well, we are hoping for the best, as uh, Carlos said, we'll certainly be at the upper end of the bank, but uh, we generally don't like to change the uh, guidance in between the, of the year. Although we are very, very optimistic to be, uh, if I have to say, much of all the guidance in the both revenues and Sure, got it, so that's useful. Uh, the second question was with respect to the, uh, just on the domestic business or on an overall basis as well, what kind of product launches have happened in H1, uh, how many new products have been launched and what's the sort of uh, schedule uh, uh, that we have maybe for the second half of the year? Uh, say we have launched products uh, in a lot of different parts of the world now and, uh, and uh, there are a lot of products to be launched in the next, uh, uh, in the next uh, months until the end of the, the, the year. We are uh, predicting to keep our innovation rate in the range of 20 plus percent uh, as we are uh, keeping uh, these launching uh, in a very important way. Uh, one of the, the, the key uh, launches will be our triple way uh, mixture of food side in Brazil, Evolution. That is a really uh, very, uh, very unique uh, uh, product, a very unique formulation, very unique uh, mixture, and we are very uh, positive with that. It's the first year, uh, and uh, and uh, this this product is part of the family of uh, NMX that we have already launched uh, many products in that platform, uh, like Unisec Road, like Trigium, like Trisima, like uh, Chloe, and now Evolution, and we have uh, other ones coming in the near in the in the future. I'd say, but that's, it's, a, it's moving quite good. Yeah, in case, uh, if you are specific about the India domestic product, we also have a global CEO, Faru Kilu, on the line, CCO. Huh? So, Faru, in case uh, you can add a few more colors to that. So, so, thank you, thank you, Anand. Uh, so, we do have some, uh, uh, we have a triple way C treatment, which is very updated. There is also a two-way insecticide that we are uh, pretty hopeful of so in, the, in, the, in the next uh, in the, uh, ready season. So there are a few lined up. Uh, once we launch, and uh, we would disclose more uh, information about them. Okay, Paul, thanks. Thanks, Robert. Question, if I may, uh, what sort of capex guidance have you given, if at all? I'm sorry if I missed that earlier. X of any acquisitions that may or may not be there for 22 and 23. Uh, 
Our capex guidance was about 300 to 320 billion dollars. Uh, this is, uh, I would say, 60 percent towards uh, product registration, and 40 percent is towards uh, putting up physical assets. This is for this year, sir. This financial year. That's right. This is for this financial year. All right, sir. Thank you very much. I'll come back if I have more questions. I have very Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Girish Achipalya from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Thanks for the opportunity. I have just two questions. Uh, one was just the pricing environment. How has that been uh, given the inflation that we've seen? Uh, and are there any specific pockets in the second half where you think there could be some pressure uh, continuing? And the second was just a vision question around nurture farm as to uh, you know, how do we look at uh, what kind of uh, capex or investments are we expected to do this year and next year, and how do we think about it slightly more medium term? Thanks. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'll take that. Uh, uh, so as far as the pricing, you know, there has been a complete disruption. Um, uh, UPL is probably the, the the most backward integrated company in, in our industry. Um, and uh, you know there is a huge disruption of supply uh, from China because of all the reasons which are well known, including power, you know the Winter Olympics and various other uh, issues going on there. Um, we feel um, quite confident that uh, all the cost increase will be passed down to the market uh, because uh, there's just no way to be able to absorb some of the you know costs which are increasing dramatically across the board um, so and we we are uh, while there are some ongoing commitments uh, which have been made uh, but most customers are absolutely open to and and understanding that uh, the there is a kind of a force measure uh, in the environment and uh, we are able to see the price increases month by month. So we are quite uh, comfortable with the <clears throat> with uh, with our uh, uh, with with passing that through. As far as Nurture Farm, uh, uh, it's an ambitious project which is uh, trans uh, transforming the uh, agriculture space in India with uh, digitizing a lot of the uh, aspects of their operations and. Uh, we're very happy with the adoption of our uh, digital platform. Uh, most of the services are being ordered. 90% adoption we've had on uh, on our platform for various uh, aspects of our um, um, our, our uh, you know initiatives, and uh, we are con going to continue to invest. Uh, uh, you know, uh, about uh, 50 million a year. Uh, give or take uh, for the next uh, couple of years at least and then we will review that thank you i'll join the queue thank you the next question is from the line of vishnu kumar from spark capital please go ahead uh, good evening and thanks for your time uh, uh something back on the same question on margins uh, two questions uh, one uh, when do we expect some respite in the cost in china Second, from a pricing front, uh, should we expect uh, some uptick in pricing in the next uh, two quarters? Uh, maybe Raj, you, uh, Raj, our global head of supply chain is on the line. Maybe Raj, you can answer the first part, and then Carlos will answer. Yeah, uh, thanks, uh, thanks, Anand. Uh, no, I, I mean, we expect that you know China, China situation should normalize during uh, the next uh, uh, calendar year, sometimes early part of the next calendar year. Uh, because uh, because of this energy crisis, we don't see uh, uh, things getting uh, you know any better at least uh, till end of this year for sure. And next uh, current year, we see uh, some normalization happening. So that's uh, uh, that's uh, on 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 the on the cost side. On the price aspect, Carlos, maybe you can ask. Yeah. Uh, Thanks for the question. Uh, it's uh, it's a we have been increasing price in consultation with our customers who are aware of the current situation to ensure that their 
requires the entire full field. So we have a very strong customer intimacy and, uh, and uh, we have uh, been able to sit down with the customers and work together with them to understand their needs, to understand their problems, uh, and to make them understand our, uh, the moment to do. And, and they are aware of that. They are aware of that and, uh, and we have been able to, to really ensure and work together with them to, to, to found the best uh, uh, solution. And, and uh, these have been working in a, in a, very, in a very positive way. You know, we are also trying to help farmers with alternative solutions like biosolutions, functional equivalence technologies that uh, we are working to, to help them to, to overcome this moment. I wish me just to add to what Carlos said, you know, I mentioned in my commentary that uh, this quarter we could start paying price increases somewhere from mid-August or and September. So we, this is the full impact. Uh, we will see the impact of full price increases in Q3 and Q4 as we move forward. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But it's, it's, uh, we, we have been able to manage that because of uh, our relationship with the customers and the yeah. way that we care about that. And as I then say, say, we will see that more effectively in the Q3 report. Thank you. Got so just one question on the taxation related uh, uh, commentary in the notes, uh, uh, with specific ones with the management and control from India. Uh, which subsidiaries are there and any potential impact that you could just uh, highlight? Uh, these are basically subsidiaries out of Mauritius and Gibraltar. And uh, we don't, uh, you know, we we are uh, challenging the orders. I mean, uh, the the uh, information requests and other things because we do believe that uh, there is no uh, real case for us uh, for them to uh, raise these questions. So uh, we are we will be uh, taking legal advice and uh, we'll be providing repeater to them. We don't see any. Thanks a lot, sir, and all the best. Thanks, Vishnu. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tarang from Old Bridge Capital. Please go ahead. Hello, good evening. Good evening. Uh, two questions from my side. Uh, one on the Chris Hansen collaboration. Uh, what's the significance of this? And you know, what factors do you think that might have worked for Chris and UPL for this collaboration to come through? Uh, uh, I mean, uh, uh, yeah. So, so, uh, so UPL is is number one company in the in the biosolutions space. We today with uh, our NPP platform, we are a, a market leader in most markets and most uh, uh, you know crops uh, in the biosolution place. We have um, a clear uh, focus on that, and uh, a company like Clear uh, Christian Hansen is looking for partners. In fact, um, um, uh, they have actually walked away from existing relationships in some of the markets and moved their existing portfolio to us, like in the groundnut market in, uh, in uh, Argentina. And our whole Pronutiva concept, which is a, a combination of uh, uh, bio and, uh, and the traditional uh, chemical business, uh, is uh, finding great acceptance among the agriculture sector. Uh, also, with our focus on sustainability and our uh, focus on, on on sustainable agriculture practices, uh, you know this concept is is being accepted very well. Uh, the Open Ag platform, which is really collaborative by by uh, inherit by its inheritance, uh, uh, is something which is helping us uh, really open doors with many other uh, companies, not only Christian Hansen. Uh, thank you. Uh, my second one is on Nurture Farm. Uh, you know, how are you generating awareness on this? And, uh, you know, are there any competing platforms? And what's, uh, you know, differentiating about uh, Nurture Farm? Uh, yeah, so um, Nurture Farm is a grassroots level. Um, the awareness is with pharma. There is uh, direct contact. UPL has... Uh, a uh, huge presence on the ground. Uh, we have Pronotiva villages, which are platinum gold villages, where we have more than 70, 80% market share. There, last count, there was close to 100 such villages. Uh, so we have a lot of grassroots connect um, at the farm. Uh, 
Uh, our whole business is moving from selling products to selling outcomes. And we are, uh, with the Nurture platform, uh, we are actually uh, working towards offering fa farmers outcome rather than just products. And that allows us to have a much more stronger relationship on, and uh, also a much stronger trust, trustful relationship with the farmers. Okay, and are there any competing platforms? You tell me, I don't know. <laughs> no, I'm not aware, that's what I'm asking. Even I'm not aware. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Varshit Shah from Veto Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, and congrats on great set of numbers. So my question is actually to to follow on on Brazil. So we have seen a tougher year, uh, tougher in previous season in Brazil, and so I just wanted to know what is the channel inventory for the industry as a whole in Brazil and for UTL. Uh, and second, how many more quarters of pricing is required to, to compensate for the current uh, uh, raw related installation in, in the Latin America market? Channel inventory in Brazil. The Brazil business, uh, it's uh, have been a, a challenge because we uh, have taken uh, these anticipated orders but uh, because of our relationship with the customers, the way that we have been able to manage that, uh, explain the difficulties and the, how the, the situation that is there uh, uh, has been more challengeable. But uh, uh, we have been uh, working very close to the customers to, to overcome that. And uh, the inventory is reducing uh, now that the farm, the, 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 the the season had started. Uh, so the planted area of soybean will be increased uh, for more than 40 million hectares of soybean. Uh, corn area is increasing. Cotton area is increasing uh, significantly. Say so, uh, uh, the, the the inventory in Brazil at the end of this season, at the end of this year, uh, potentially be one of the is, is smaller in the history because farmers, because of the constraint of product availability, will be trying to use as much as possible their inventory. See, we are predicting a, a very low inventory at the end of the of the season uh, in Brazil. And uh, inventory now, it's moving. It's moving to the farmers and and uh, and, uh, and uh, as price of soybean is quite good, cotton price is quite good, Corn price is very good. Say we believe that uh, uh, inventory will be very low at the end. Sure, that's really helpful. And how many? Uh, so the just for clarification, I, I am just studying. How many more price hikes are required to cover the to cover the inflation, which uh, to to get your gross margin to the desired level in Brazil and over of that time? How many more price hikes? So I'll say that it's like this, you know, uh, based on the cost inflation, we are, as, as Carlos mentioned to one of the early answers, we are in a position to pass on the cost increases. Now, as uh, most of the PSO group companies are facing these challenges, more so because of the supply constraints, uh, you know, it is, uh, it is becoming even easier to push on the prices because what the farmers slash distributors are looking for is uh, regular supplies of material. And because of our back, uh, back, uh, you know, backward integration and end-to-end -end manufacturing of key molecules, uh, we, we are in a very advantageous position on this side. So we are taking price increases. Of course, uh, I cannot give you one price increase across uh, all of this, but we continue to take price increases uh, as and when we see if there's a cost increase pressure or pre uh, increase in logistics costs or any other such issues. Thanks and all the best. Thank you, Vaisal. Thank you. The next question is from the line of S. Ramesh from Nirbal Man. Please go ahead. Uh, good evening, uh, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, and the best of you since meeting. The first thought is in terms of the strong performance in U.S. and Europe, particularly Europe, because first quarter was disappointing. So uh, what explains the strong performance in Europe and U.S.? Uh, how much of this is, uh, this is driven by volume growth? Uh, it's a uh, uh, is a combination of volume and price, you no? Know? And uh, and uh, it's uh, it's uh, 
It's like the, our growth, 15% growth in, in volume, 3% growth in, 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 in price. In, uh, in Europe and in, in U.S., it's proportionally the same. Uh, the, 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 the demand in U.S., because of the price of the commodities are so good, and in U.S. have had uh, a quite reasonable uh, harvest. Uh, farmers are very excited for the next season, and uh, and uh, uh, the, 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 the needs. Uh, see, uh, our core portfolio it's very uh, in line what uh, the customer needs in Europe, in U.S. So all the all the work that we have done to develop the product portfolio. Back integrated the right products. No? Okay, we have done the the, the good choices. No? If, if you see the choice that we have done to invest in glucosinate, to invest in essential core, to invest in, in different molecules, have been the right right uh, decision at that time. No? And uh, because these kind of decisions we, we don't take in one year. This is a, a long term decision, is a planning, is a is a vision. No? And uh, and uh, Europe in 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 in, uh, in US is very much that. And uh, see, uh, we we have uh, rules consistent in the key molecules that we have in Europe and the key molecules that we have in in in, in North America. Let's say very very consistent, very good, and uh, as volume and pricing as both. Okay, and the, and the second thought is in terms of. Uh, your sustainable and uh, biological solutions uh, in the second quarter. What the kind of growth and traction you are seeing there? I think we we are uh, looking as we have announced uh, uh, in some of the, our meetings before. Our drive is to arrive in 50% of our sales uh, with a different state of products and bio solution products. See our drive is to move in that direction. Our growth in differentiated products uh, have been higher than any other other area or any other uh, portfolio. See, we have grown much more in differentiated solutions than in, in post patent in uh, Me Too uh, products. And we have been able to have a double digit double growth in biosolutions, even though the frost in uh, uh, Europe and the drought in Mexico, we have been able to grow uh, double digit in uh, in biosolution, and we are uh, trustful that uh, we will keep that uh, that close until the end of this the, the full year 2022. I believe uh, this year we started demonstrating the importance of launch of NTP, our natural plant protection company. And uh, this focalization, the launch of the natural plant protection company, is really is giving us the focus that we need, is giving us the the the, the platform that we need to really build biosolution in the in the level that uh, we have planned. Thank you very much, uh, and uh, wish you all those thanks for joining with you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. The next question is from the line of Abhijit Akela from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening. Thank you so much. Um, just a couple from my end. One is on uh, Nurture.com. Uh, you know, we are making significant investments uh, here uh, going forward for the next several years. So, uh, you know, any thoughts you could share regarding the possible monetization plans we are looking at, and uh, you know, how valuable could this be in coming years? So we are building a, a, a digital platform uh, which uh, um, is uh, really engaging farmers uh, from all their challenges and some of the pain points because we are transitioning from a product company to more a, a solution provider. And, uh, you know, this is a, a, an exciting journey we've had. Uh, fantastic, uh, much better than expected uh, traction. Um, we are seeing um, uh, across the board, uh, uh, you know, in every value chain we look at, because this works on a value chain basis, uh, uh, we are seeing a tremendous impact on yield and uh, uh, we are able to make for the farmer. Uh, we've just uh, closed the groundnut season in Gujarat and we saw a 30 to 40% yield increase uh, for uh, a 
almost 300,000 acres. So everywhere uh, we are seeing a tremendous growth. There's a response which we got for the CRM, what we call is end the burn campaign uh, around uh, Punjab and Haryana. We also saw huge, uh, you know, we were restricting the number of farmers we take on that platform. Uh, we saw a tremendous uh, response and we feel that while we were targeting 3x the growth next season, uh, we, we think we'll be able to cover more than 75% of the acres next year. And all these farmers uh, uh, on board digitally. So um, uh, so this is, platform is growing. We have, uh, uh, over the last uh, 18 months, hired almost an uh, 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 amazing pool of uh, talent in our nurture office in Bangalore. We've grown that from one one floor to, I think, almost three quarters of one floor to three floors, uh, and is bustling office um, with almost 300 people close to, uh, of young, talented uh, uh, guys who are really excited about the impact they're making in agriculture. So uh, right now uh, we are just building this platform. We'll see. Uh, what to do with it uh, later. There are other uh, companies also wanting to engage on it. There are some discussions going on. Some products are on the platform. So, uh, you know, lots happening there. Uh, no no plans for anything right now, but uh, we know that uh, this is the future of, uh, of uh, you know, agriculture. It has to be digitized. Thank you. That, that's helpful. And uh, second question, just on the margin outlook, uh, uh, you know, we've had this uh, target of three, four year target of, you know, achieving say 24, 25% EBITDA margins for at the consolidated level. Um, so in the context of, uh, you know, these investments in uh, say nurture and other areas, as well as uh, the input cost pressures, uh, do we believe we are still on track to sort of deliver on that, you know, 24% plus in the next three years or so? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, this year was a very difficult year in India in terms of weather patterns. Uh, the growth got a little bit muted. A lot of uh, markets were, a lot of crops were disrupted. Uh, so uh, there was some pressure. Plus, we had uh, uh, a large investment in some of these uh, uh, platforms. Also, uh, transitioning uh, farmers from traditional chemicals to bio product is a slightly more costly exercise in terms of SGNA. So that's taken up some more investment. But all these things in a normal year would would not even show up because if we talk about normalized growth in India of 15, 20, even 25%, uh, you, you these all things would be absorbed uh, uh, within the uh, existing uh, kind of cost structure. Uh, saying that we, we, we have to invest in the future and uh, we will continue to invest in the future. So, uh, you know, uh, these are all assets which are much more valuable than the uh, money we are putting in. And just to add here to what Mr. Shaw says, I believe these are all done to accelerate. In fact, uh, if at all these investments will speed up our reaching that target of 24, 24, even higher in a shorter period of time. Got it. Uh, thank you so much and wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Ritesh Gupta from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Hi, all. Thanks for taking my question. Uh, just on the uh, market share bit, uh, you already have about 90% market share in the global active market. Uh, global active market. Is there a is there ambition that you have, let's say, over the next five years or so, that you would like to articulate in terms of how, the amount of market share that you want to take? And then, uh, secondly, on the margin side as well, I mean, we do see that uh, you do import some of the raw material still from China, and probably like uh, things like yellow phosphorus uh, are probably for for that you are probably dependent on China in every case. Uh, any way you could reduce that dependency, and how Q3, Q4 will look like given the kind of situation we have seen in China uh, in the recent, especially on this material. Let me answer that for first on your second question um, on the yellow phosphorus. We we actually don't import any yellow phosphorus from China. 
right? Uh, we have we have alternate uh, sources. We don't import any yellow phosphorus from China, so we are not dependent on China for yellow phosphorus. That's number one. Um, and 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 as far as the yellow phosphorus is concerned, uh, you know we are adequately uh, covered for the next two quarters. So I don't see any worries in terms of coverage or or supply security is concerned, right? So that's on China. On 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 market share, I think. Uh, yeah, I, 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 don't, I didn't understand your question. What was the first part of the question? No, no so uh, you already have about 9-10% market share after the RISCAS acquisition. So do you want to articulate any kind of market share aspirations you have over the next 3-5 to five years? Uh, we are over the last 10 years, uh, UP has been the fastest growing company in the, in the industry. Uh, so typically we gain market share in almost every market we operate in every year. So uh, steadily, we'll continue to gain market share, and we believe that uh, in a period like this where commodity prices are high, markets will also grow. Uh, farmers tend to overinvest. So uh, we, while we are, uh, you know, today UPL is uh, number one company in many parts of the world, including India, Mexico, Chile, Colombia, um, uh, South Africa, and in other many other African countries. Uh, uh, we uh, believe that uh, you know leadership requires uh, uh, other responsibilities, and so we are continuously investing in innovation, not only in uh, in our uh, uh, portfolio, uh, but also in our um, uh, you know uh, way to uh, market, uh, go to market, and uh, that whole transition is going to drive the whole change in the industry. And I believe that industry will continue to consolidate. Uh, so, uh, because um, uh, we believe that uh, the farmers uh, are not uh, really interested in buying products, they are interested in outcome. And UPL is a thought leader and market leader in that whole concept. So we believe that consolidation will drive a market share uh, rise, not only for us, but the rest of the uh, top uh, five to 10 com companies. Sure, that's helpful. Just one small follow-up uh, on the yellow phosphorus bit. How much of uh, uh, how much proportion of global yellow phosphorus production comes from China and from other countries? If you have it back of your we mind, don't buy any from China. So, okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vijay Sangvi from Pragya Equities. Please go ahead. Hello. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, since the last money got a promoter stake has remained stagnant, any plans of increasing fund or uh, increasing promoter stake? I mean, slow and steady, we will promo increase the promoter stake. Okay, like uh, it's around 28% right now. What you will, what the stake will increase? At to? this value, I want 100%. <laughs> okay, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Thank you. The next question is from the line of Matthias Wamel from Blue Bay Asset Management. Please go ahead. Hi, thank you very much. Hopefully you can hear me all right. Um, two or three questions from, from my side, um, which are more uh, debt focused. The first one is, um, you know, clearly and, and understandably so, the working capital usage increased a little bit um, this, this first half of the year. Are you kind of comfortable and, and, and in seeing that reversed online with the seasonality of the business for, for the kind of second half? And then two related questions is, can you tell us uh, what was the outstanding amount of your receivable sales at the end of, of this first half of the year? And what are you targeting for the fiscal 2022? Thanks. Hey, Madhaj, thanks, thanks for joining us on this call. Uh, we remain confident of, uh, you know, having working capital in the range of 80 to 90 days uh, between that range uh, at the end of uh, the financial year. And, uh, you know, these uh, elevated inventory levels are super beneficial in situations where there's a supply shortage at the same time uh, the other supply chain disruption. So, 
we remain very optimistic and confident about that. Uh, uh, I think the receivables uh, uh, outstanding uh, the securitization as of 30th September was in the range of about 600 million, uh, and uh, again uh, uh, it was about 50 or million low, ha higher than that of last year same time. That's the number. Okay, perfect. And do you have a sense for for the full year figure? Uh, we should be uh, in the range of we are targeting about 1.1 billion to 1.2 billion, about uh, 100 million more than uh, last year's numbers. Okay, uh, it, thank it, you. It will depend on uh, uh, It will depend on uh, also how the interest rates behave in Brazil. Uh, you would have heard today morning again. Last night they increased their uh, selling rate by uh, CDM uh, I rate by. 1.5. So if it gets yes. too expensive, then we will not do much of securitization. Okay, perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mathias. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Deepak Chitroda from Philip Capital. Please go ahead. Thank you. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, and uh, first of all, th uh, congratulations on the good set of numbers. Uh, my first question is about uh, you know, uh, as the commodity prices are on a you know higher side, if you talk about you know across the agri inputs, including agcam and the fertilizer seeds and all. So, do you think that you know probably not in the near term, maybe after one or two quarters, that uh, farmers will become very cautious and you know that is indirectly going to impact their margin as well. So it probably indirectly that can, you know, uh, impact the uh, overall, uh, you know, the demands or volumes. Yeah, uh, I can take that. I'd say if you see uh, what would be the strategy of the farms would be to manage their uh, fertilizer uh, because a lot of a lot of farmers have. Uh, fertilizer in the soil and they, they could reduce the rate of fertilizer or in some situation minimize that uh, in an important way. Uh, on, the, on the crop protection side, they doesn't have a choice because at the time that you buy a seed, that you invest in the seed and the farmers need to invest, uh, they buy a low value seed, it would be even worse. So they need to have a yield. Uh, if they do that, they uh, need to control the wheat. They need to control disease. How they can manage without control disease? They need to control the insects. How they can manage without the control the insects? To see uh, 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 what could could happen is some shift in technology. Now, let's say they will try to use a little bit lower value technology, and uh, this could be even favorable to us because we have both. Now we have. Uh, a more, uh, uh, more, uh, let's say, not so expensive technology, and we have the the premium technology too. See, I believe uh, there will be a mix cotton growers with the price of the cotton that we are seeing now. Cotton growers uh, we will uh, uh, use as much technology they can because the par the price is quite good. Uh, potentially, corn growers will be more selective. No, soybean growers will be normal because the price is still 12.5 dollars per bushel. No, uh, if you see price of the specialty crops, coffee, it's an amazing price. Say one of the, it's a, it's a, it's a, in the high high level of historical price of coffee. Say uh, 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 demand for citrus very high. No, uh, say we we see that the farmers will use technology. They will potentially minimize the amount of fertilizer in a in a strategic way. Sure, sure. And uh, uh, my second question is uh, about our bio solution business. So, uh, as I understand, we are aiming to you know uh, have a contribution uh, of almost close to about fifty percent. We are targeting towards a differentiated product. So, uh, you know, in terms of bio solution product, uh, as I understand, we have larger Contribution, uh, I think, initially from the Europe, uh, European region, but now uh, you know with the Arista integration, uh, you know, almost like two years now. So how uh, you know big is the penetration across the you know other regions like Latin, North America, or you know Asia? 
Yeah, uh, the, the, the critical part of uh, the biosolution is the presence, you know, to be present closer to the farm. And this is uh, with the integration of uh, the two companies became a very strong base for us. Now, see, we have presence in, in 138 countries. We are uh, in the ground uh, closer to the farmers. And, uh, and with the launch and the secret separation of uh, NPP as an as a entity inside of UPL that will be completely dedicated for the biosolutions, uh, the speed of growth will be increased dramatically. See, we have launched uh, amazing, amazing uh, team. We have launched uh, amazing brand. To see our our NPP brand is beautiful. It's it's really unique, and uh, and uh, we are working a lot with this uh, uh, life uh, that the biosolutions create. Now, and uh, and uh, as Jay have pointed out, our our focus in reimagining sustainability, our focus in carbon sequestration, our focus in uh, in soil health. Uh, it's uh, it's uh, uh, something that it's it's creating an uh, an, uh, an environment to us to really grow, and we we'll be able to to teach the farmers, to help the farmers to be more sustainable using productive approach that we use the chemical when it's needed, we use to explain that to, to, the, to the farmers. It's like that we, it's like our, ourselves as a human being. Uh, we take our vitamins, we take our probiotics, we take everything that is possible to minimize the use of antibiotic. But when you need antibiotic, you need to take the antibiotic or you die. Huh? It's the same what we are doing. We are working to make the the plants more resilient, make the plant more healthy, and then the farmer can use less to do more. You know? uh, 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 and that concept is our concept of Promotiva, that uh, we, we, we use the best of both. When, how we can manage to, to, to apply our biotechnology approach uh, 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 our bio solutions approach and use the chemical as needed. Now, I say that is the concept. This is why uh, uh, we believe that uh, by 2026, 50% uh, of our sales will be uh, differentiated solution and bio solutions together in our uh, <clears throat> post pattern technology or V2 technology will be. Uh, less than 50%. That is our our focus, and we are in a good uh, in a good movement in that direction. And we are having amazing support from our partners, like Christian Hansen that uh, Jay was explaining. That is amazing partner for us. It's a great partner, and we have many others that we are working together. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, we take that as the last question. I now hand the conference over to the over to Mr. Anand Ura for closing comments. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thanks for joining us on this call. If you have any follow-up questions, please feel free to reach out to Radhika or myself, and we'll be happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Have a great evening. Thank Bye. you. Ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of UPL Limited, that concludes this conference. Thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.